proper. So I do speak about executions. That's out there for the young. That's normally the parents that are scared and not the children, though. But I, it's out there. So I will be speaking about executions. Come forward if you want, if you dare. Come forward. <laughs> How am I going to do an execution if you're not that close? And welcome. Don't, don't be scared. You're okay, guys. Come on. There's nothing scary. Come forward. Welcome to Her Majesty's Royal Palace and Fortress, the Tower of London. My name is Sean. I am one of the 37 Yeoman Warders, nicknamed the Beef Eaters, and I have the honour to live and work here at the Tower of London. And it's my pleasure today to be able to take you on a tour, a tour that should last about five hours, kids. <laughs> five hours. Hours of history. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Red pie, I don't like you. Come on. Yeah, Isn't that what we do? Just, yes. I love this man now. I love him, right? He just said an hour. He yeah. said, I've got to do an hour. So that's what we're going to do, okay? Yeah. How about that? Okay, so we're going to cut that down to an hour. Now I'm going to tell you more about the Yeoman Waters at the end of the tour. But I do have a lot of ground to cover and a lot of history to tell you about. So we're going to begin. And the story begins way back in the year 1066. When William, the Duke of Normandy, commonly known as William the Conqueror, defeated the Anglo-Saxon King Harold II at the Battle of Hastings. Now William was crowned King William I of England on Christmas Day that very same year. He then proceeded to reign over his newly conquered subjects, who didn't take too kindly to Norman domination. So in order that the king could rule effectively and safely, he ordered that a number of royal palaces and fortresses be built throughout the country. And the site he chose for our fortress is on the ruins of an old Roman fort to the east of London. Today, we know it as the White Tower, situated behind those rooftops. No point looking, it's behind the rooftops. <laughs> it's going to be a long day, this one. Stop it. We're going to have a much better view of that once you're inside. Now, the tower has been used for many things over the years, as well as being a citadel to command and defend the great city of London. It was once used for the storage of state documents until that was moved in the middle of the 19th century to form the public records office at Kew. It was a royal treasury and was where all the coins of the realm were minted. The crown jewels and royal regalia have been safely stored here since 1303 and are still here for you to see today. It was a royal armory used for the storage of warlike stores and provisions. The Royal Observatory was here until moved to Greenwich in the 17th century. And the Royal Menagerie, or Zoo, that was here until moved to Regent's Park in 1835 to form what we now know as London Zoo. But the tower is probably more famous to most of you, being that of a prison. And nearly every building that you see, at some time or another, has held prisoners. But these weren't common criminals. Some of these were powerful people. They were wealthy people. They were people with titles. But even so, if they were found guilty of their crimes, they were taken up there to Tower Hill. Just on the other side of the road there, is an area known as Trinity Gardens. And that was the site for public executions. And it was there between the 14th and the 18th century that no less than 75 people of noble birth were executed by block and axe. And the first was in 1381. A man by the name of Simon of Sudbury. He was the Archbishop of Canterbury and he was dragged from the tower of Punta Tower Hill and he had his head hacked off. <laughs> in fact, well handled. <laughs> in fact, you weren't even scared at all, were you? In front of an angry crowd during the Peasants' Revolt, his crime, he introduced poll tax. Don't do that anymore, we should bring that back. But the first legal execution was in 1388 of Sir Simon Burley. And the last to be executed on the hill was Simon Fraser, the Lord Lovett, in 1747 for his part in the failed Second Jacobite Rebellion led by Bonnie Prince Charlie. Now, picture the scene up on that hill all those hundreds of years ago, thousands, 
thousands of people would have gathered to watch that unfortunate soul give his final address. But before he placed his neck on the block, he would have paid the executioner a small tip or gratuity to ensure that he carried out his task diligently. And in one swift, painless stroke of the axe, and after making his peace with God, he would kneel, place his neck on the block, the executioner, he would step forward. I'm gonna get you again. <laughs> I'll get you a smile in this time, that's good. He would raise the axe high in the air, and he'd bring it down, da, in one final blow. And grabbing hold of the severed but still bleeding head, he would hold it high for all to see him again. Behold, the head of a traitor. So die, all traitors. God save the king and the crowd. It would cheer. <laughs> Rather pathetically. <laughs> We've done all that work, me and you, didn't we? All that acting, and they've done that. That's rubbish, isn't it? Let's do this again. Right, let's try it. Behold the head of a traitor! So die all traitors! God save the king! <laughs> God for that. <laughs> he would then impale that still bleeding head on a spike, and it would be paraded through the streets of London, taken to London Bridge, the only crossing point into the city in those days, and there, it would remain as a warning to all those who would carry out similar crimes. Now the headless body would be brought back into the tower, placed in the chapel royal of St Peter Ad Vincula in an unmarked traitor's grave. And the route that body took would be very similar to the route that we're about to take today. And it starts when we go through that archway just over there. We'll soon be going through that archway when we do. I'd like you all to look up. Notice the spikes of the Port Cullis or Norman Drop Gate. That gate weighs over one and a half tons. Dates back to 1326. Unfortunately, the rope that holds it up also dates back to 1326. <laughs> Better get a move on. But if you remain to look up, you will see three circular holes drilled into the stonework. These are called murder holes, used to tip all sorts of substances onto enemies below. Tip water onto fires lit to breach those gates, or even to tip their waste into a waiting cart below. Another reason not to hang about in that archway. Ladies and gentlemen, follow me now to the outer ward of the Tower of London. Our journey begins.